Hello everyone. Uh, before we start, uh, let's pray. Our heavenly and merciful Father God who loves us, thank you for giving us great chance to study the Bible uh, together with our brothers. The before the we were sinners, death to hell, but now we got saved through the blood of Jesus Christ. So we are really thankful to the Lord. As a Christian who got saved, we are willing to learn the your word. So please open our heart and please give the knowledge and humble mind so that we may understand the true meaning of the word of God. The without God's help, no one come to know the what God's will is. So please teach us and guide us. And also the please the let us realize the your will uh, through the, this time. As a brothers who got saved, uh, we are willing to be used by God for gospel. So please use our brothers and sisters, uh, our brothers in the church, and also uh, please the give give us a chance to be used by God for gospel continually. So this moment, all of us, we are present before you. So please teach us through the your word. Thank you, Lord. We depend everything in your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Okay, let's open the Bible. The Matthew chapter 9, the verse 36. The Matthew chapter 9, the verse 36. Okay, let's read together. Uh, but when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion for them, because they were weary and scattered, like a sheep having no shepherd. Okay, so we are learning about the, this topic today. So, uh, shepherd and lamb. Okay, so uh, the we are learning today the, with the handout. Okay, number one, look at the handout together. Uh, the Lord who became uh, the shepherd. Okay, so today the, we are learning about the meaning of the shepherd and also the lambs. So through this time, the, we came to know the, what the characteristic of uh, the, our Lord, the shepherd. And also the, we came to know that uh, the, what the characteristic of the unbelievers and saved people. Okay, so today the, we are learning about this. Okay, number one, the Lord who became the shepherd. Okay, number one, the Lord who became the shepherd saw the flock and see them now also. Yes, okay, Psalm chapter 33, verse 13 to 15. Uh, let me read. The Lord looks from heaven, he sees all the sons of men. The, from the place of his dwelling, he looks on all the inhabitants of the earth. He fashions their hearts individually. He considers all their works. And Psalm 94, 8 to 9, Understand you uh, the senseless among the people, and you fools, when will you be wise? He who planted the ear, shall he not hear? He who formed the eye, the shall he not see? Yes. Uh, the, which means uh, the God is observing the people who are not saved. Uh, and also God will uh, try to find out the people who seek God. Because God desires the old man to be saved. That's why uh, God is the looking the, for the low souls, uh, for their salvation. And also God is so... Uh, the watching the every situation of the human being in this world. And also we have to think about that the Lord uh, the became the shepherd, right? Yeah, the shepherd. So uh, the, his concern is also uh, in front of the church and brothers and sisters and also the, he desires all men to be saved, right? Yeah, because the God is love. Okay, the small two, he saw them and he was moved the, with the compassion for them. He pity on them, the Lord pity on our life. The background of the work of the Lord is a love the, which can pity on. The what we got saved was done by love of the Lord. Yes. The why God is the looking uh, the toward uh, looking 
the people who are not saved. Why? The, why God concerns lost souls? The, because the God is love. Because God desires all men to be saved. As you know, the God has the two kinds of the attitude. God is justice and God is love. Because God is justice, the sins have to be judged. Right? And also God is love. That's why the God desires all men to be saved. So these two attitudes of Jesus, the was done on the cross, right? If you look at the cross, we can find out the two kinds of the attitude of Christ. The what is the first? God is justice. That's why sin has to be judged. That's why on the cross, the, because of our sins, the punishment that was done on the cross. He received the punishment instead of us on the cross. And also we, we can see the, his love on the cross. Because of love, he was crucified on the cross because he desires, the sa- he desires all men to be saved. That's why for me, because he loves me, he died on the cross. So through the cross, we came to know that how much he loves us, right? So the, we have to think about that. So because of love, yes, uh, the, he... Uh, the pity on the lost souls. So which means the background of the work of the Lord is the love. Yes, this is a very important factor. Yeah. The what is the reason of the God's, the what is the reason of the God's the work? The why Jesus came to this world and why God is working until now to save the lost souls. Why? The what is purpose? Yes, because of love. The which means the whenever we do the for the Lord, and whatever we do, the we have to do to the glory of God. Especially the motivation is love, right? Because of love, because of love, yeah. Because of God's love, that's why that we are doing our best to save the lost souls, right? Because we have received the God's love when we got saved. That's why we also the can love the Lord. That's why we really want. We really want to follow the God's will because of love. So background and motivation of Christian life is love. Yeah, this is a very important factor, right? So even though we have a faith and hope, but without love, uh, it is nothing, right? The first Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, the, there are three factors of Christian life. Hmm? The faith, the hope, love. But without love, yeah, another things are uh, uh, the nothing, right? So Bible said, above all, the what is most important? Yeah, love, love. So uh, let's just open the Bible. Ephesians chapter two, verse four. Ephesians chapter two, the verse four. Ephesians chapter two, verse four and five. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved. Yes. Yeah. The God is rich in mercy because of his the great love. Great love. Yes, his love is the un- uncounted. Huh? Right? So, uh, the, which means uh, the forever love, eternal love. His love is not like uh, the love of people, right? Yeah. Because he loves me, yeah, he died on the cross. So by his death, the, he, showed the, uh, he showed his great love to each of us. Yes. So number three, the Lord who is almighty, and omniscience can see exactly the situation of life who has known the Lord. Yeah. So because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Yeah, the main chapter here. Okay. Small four. However, the many life do not know who they are exactly. The human being does not know their real situation well. So so they try to make their world well for good living. So they try to pack themselves to gain a happiness, and they try to make this world 
the paradise the where they can live well. So they try to make the permanent unsettlement. Yeah. So let's think about the unbelievers. Also, this is a situation before we got saved. Yeah. Unbelievers can think that the, this world can be like a paradise. Right? That's why they are not interested about the eternal uh, uh, planes. Because many are so still now, the many don't know that the where is the heaven and what is the heaven, and many don't know the which way to heaven, right? And also, the many focus on the world. That's why the many try to make this world uh, the, like a paradise, because they can think that they can live the, with the good the environment and then good condition forever in this world. That's why the many try to make this world as a paradise. But this is a wrong misunderstanding, right? Because according to the Bible, the, this world will be perished. Yeah. Already God prophesied that the God will destroy this world by fire. Yeah. Like at the time of the Noah, the God uh, the gave the warning to people that the God will destroy the world the, by water. Yeah. The many didn't believe, right? Many didn't, be, many didn't believe in God's word. Also, our generation also now, so many are not interested about the truth. Yes. So there is a not real hope in this world, right? Yeah, so we have to think about that. So it is like that the Cain, the pursuit of happiness in this world, and build a city the when the Lord proclaimed to Cain are uh, the forgetive and the vagabond you shall be on the earth. The word which the which means um the Cain departed from God, right? And it's also he focused on the world. That's why he built a city, right? City. Yeah. It was uh, um, the beginning of the uh, civilization uh, in the city, right? So, um, because uh, he focused on the world like that, also the unbelievers who are not saved, uh, they, will, uh, they are the focusing on the world, right? Because they think that they can get the happiness and the joy from the world. And also they don't think about the, about, about the eternal life. They are not interested about that, right? They don't concern about the, their spiritual conditions. So what is the, pro, the proclaim of the Lord? Yeah, they were weary and scattered like a sheep having no shepherd. Yes, look at the unbelievers. They are, not, they are like the lambs who are wandering in this world the without shepherd. Yeah. If you look at the lambs, yeah, they need the shepherd. Without shepherd, they can wander and then they can fall down and they can be departed from the flock and they can be weak. Uh, they can be lost the without shepherd. Right? So who is uh, our shepherd? Yes, our Lord Jesus Christ. But without salvation, they cannot follow the Jesus as a shepherd, right? So look at their life. Their life is like a lamb who uh, has no shepherd. That's why they are living according to their own will. They are living according to their own desire, not according to the will of God, right? Because they don't know who their shepherd is. But uh, we... The Christian who got saved, the we realized that who is our shepherd. When he got saved, we realized that our Lord is Jesus Christ. That's why we realized that He is ruling over my life. He is my Lord. Which means that owner of my life is Jesus. Because He paid out His precious blood for me. Yeah. He, the, he had purchased the my life by his blood, right? So we have to be, think about that. Okay, the page two. So the, what is the saying of the people? Uh, uh, they are saying like that, that we are happy and we are living at the safe place now and we know the, what the purpose of our life is, that we can make this world a good world where we can live well together. Now, people can live with the bread only. We can be happy with bread only. Yes. So this is what the unbelievers say. 
So they don't know the, who God is. They don't know who Jesus Christ is. They don't know the, what the salvation is, right? So they, that's why they don't know the, what the real happiness is. The, without salvation, the, we cannot be happy. Exactly, right? Okay, number five. The Lord who becomes the shepherd to came to this world to give the real satisfaction and rest and, uh, uh, and um, the holy to life who labor and to give certain purpose and uh, the meaning of life. Yeah. So, um, the Jesus came to this world to give a, a real satisfaction, right? Yeah. The real satisfaction. So, we have to think about that. Okay. So, large two. The characteristic of a lamb who has no shepherd. The lamb who has no Lord. The, which means, the let's think about the characteristic of unbelievers who are not saved. Right? Okay. The, what is the characteristic of them the, who are not saved? Mm. Okay. The uh, alphabet A. Uh, the suffering. Yes, it will be suffering the way that they live or die. Yes, look at the unbelievers. Also, this is uh, our life before. Yeah, uh, the we they were they are under the suffering and then they are suffered now in this world. Yeah, from their birth until death, right? Almost times are uh, consist of the sufferings and sickness and afflictions, right? The time of happiness is very few, which means that is not real happiness. Uh, this, the nothing can give the real happiness. Nothing can give the eternal joy. Yes. The suffering of a human, a labor and wandering, the began from sin of Adam, right? The when God created Adam first, at the time there was no problem. But the, because of the sin of Adam, the death the, came to into the world. The death came into the world. And then uh, the suffering and the affliction the began at the time. Because of sin, right? Yeah. So, um, the Genesis, uh, chapter 3, verse 16 to 19. Uh, to the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain you shall bring forth children, that your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Then to Adam, he said, Because you have heeded the voice of your wife, and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Curse is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. The birth thorns and the uh, uh, thistles uh, it shall bring forth for you. And you shall eat the herb of the field in the sweet of your face, you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, the for dust you are, and to dust you shall return. Yes, which means because of the sin, uh, the sufferings, and the difficulties, the begin. Yeah, so we have to think about that this is a result of sin. Okay. Uh, the half circle one, uh, they lived in suffering. That they did not know real pleasure and joy. Yeah. Psalm 90 verse 10. The days of our the lives are 70 years. And the, if by reason of strength they are 80 years, yet their boast is only labor and sorrow. For it is soon cut up and we fly away. Yes. Actually, our life, the without salvation, right? The life of the human being is sorrowful and the vanity of vanity, right? The King Solomon said, the vanity of vanity, vanity, all is a vanity. Yes. Okay. Uh, number two, after death, there will be eternal suffering. Yes. As you know, as you know well, the Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, after death, there will be judgment. Yeah. Actually, from the birth until the uh, until the death, we are living under the sufferings. And then also after death, uh, because death is not the end, according to the Bible, right? After death, there is a judgment. So according to the, our sins we had committed, 
the, we have to be judging it, oh, the without salvation, right? Yeah. So this is a destiny of the unbelievers who are not saved. Yeah. Okay. Romans chapter three, verse sixteen to eighteen. Destruction and the misery, the misery are in their ways, and the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Yeah, so we have to think about that. Number three, people who are under suffering due to sickness, the people who are suffered by the poverty, the people who are suffered due to the coldness, and people who are suffered by uh, torture. However, the most terrible thing is the suffering in the hell forever, right? Yeah, what is the most, the, the biggest suffering? Yes, the suffering in the hell, right? So many are going to eternal destruction now. That's why how can we stop the preaching gospel? Yeah. They don't know the, what will happen at the time. Yes. Actually, the, the while we are living in this world, we can uh, feel the, some sickness because of the, some the, uh, disease in our body. And also, anyway, also we can uh, the feel the, some sickness also in the, in our heart, right? So the physical sickness, also the mental sickness, and also there are many sufferings and difficulties and the anxiety, right? The sadness, right? We can feel the many difficulties in this world. Yeah, this is the shadow of eternal destruction in the hell. Yeah. So as you know well, the, uh, if there is a new movie, right? The, before the Mm, the opening the new movie yeah there there is a movie uh, trailer right yeah the, as, uh, the, through the movie trailer that we can guess you know, what kind of the movie uh, that will be open right so the, like that the, all kinds of the difficulties and the sickness uh, and the troubles uh, um, and also Mm -hmm. The many the problems in this world are the shadow of the eternal fire. Yeah, the like uh, the movie th trailer, right? So, uh, whenever we are under the sufferings, whenever we are uh, sick now, the, we have to think about the, what it happened in the hell. Yeah. So in the hell, the suffering and the difficulties and also the pain the will be forever. The, can you endure that? Yeah, so that's why we can give a thanksgiving to the Lord because we got saved. But the look at the unbelievers who are not saved. Yeah, where are they? Where are they going now? Right? Yeah, they are going to eternal destruction. But problem is that they don't know what will happen there. Right? Yeah. So we have to help them to uh, uh, be saved. Then they can be awakened spiritually. Right? Yeah, this is the reason why we are living in this world. We have to help them to be saved. Yeah. So, the Luke chapter 16, verse 24, Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and sent the, the Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this the flame. Yeah. So as you know where well, the one rich man died at that time and he was brought to the eternal fire and he the, felt the pain but there was no the water. And that's why he the asked. Hmm? The police let the Nazareth uh, to bring the, the one drop of water to my tongue. Yeah. Because Nazareth, even though he was a beggar at that time, even though he was poor, but uh, he got saved. Yes. Okay, so we were born with a tear, and we live with a tear, and we will die with a tear. Yes, that's why we can say that the, my life is uh, the life of a tear, right? And look at the babies. When, when, uh, the, as soon as they are born in this world, what are they doing? Yeah, they are crying. Yeah. So suffering already began from the childhood. And also until death, many times we are crying. And also when we are dying or so, we are crying. So the, we can say that the, my life is the life of a tear, right? Yeah, this is the life of unbelievers who are not saved. But the Christian who are saved are different. 
Even though we were the crying before, but after we got saved, even though there are many difficulties, even though uh, we are under the suffering, we can give a thanksgiving and we can be joyful. Yeah. Together with our brothers and sisters who got saved. Why? Because we realized God's love and we had the assurance of salvation and we can be sure that we can enter the heaven. Right? That's why we can overcome all kinds of difficulties we have. Even though we are crying, but after for a while, we can overcome, right? So, real Christians who got saved and unbelievers are different. Yeah, so, we have to think about that. So, after that, we will go to the place where we will be sorrowful and weeping and gnashing of teeth forever. Yeah. Yeah. Where is that? Yeah. The eternal fire, the hell, right? The Matthew chapter 13, verse 42. And we'll cast them into the, uh, the furnace of fire. There will be the wailing and gnashing of teeth. Yeah. The Matthew chapter 8, verse 12. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness. There will be the weeping and the gnashing of teeth. Yeah. Okay. Uh, B. The wandering. As a lamb who has no shepherd wanders, the people who are not saved are wandering now. When Cain went back from God, he will be the one who had wandered. Yes. Genesis chapter 4, verse 12. The when you till the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. Uh, the fructive and uh, the vulgar bond, you shall be on the earth. Jude chapter 1, verse 13. The uh, ragging the waves of the sea, uh, the foaming up their own the chain, uh, wandering stars, for whom is reserved the, the blackness of darkness forever. Yes, the, without salvation, the unbelievers the will uh, the wander in this world because they don't know the, where destination is. They don't know what will happen tomorrow, right? They don't know what will happen after death. That's why they are wandering in this world. Someone is looking for the happiness. Someone is looking for the good environment. Someone is looking for the real joy. But... Can they find? No. Without eternal life, without salvation, they cannot be satisfi satisfied in this world. Yeah. Okay, small one. There is no destination. Yes. They don't know that the, where they came from and where they will go, right? John chapter 8, verse 14. Jesus answered and said to them, Even if I bear witness of myself, what my witness is true. For I know where I came from and where I am going. But you do not know the where I come from and where I am going. Yes. Number two, they don't know what the purpose of life is. Yeah, they don't know what is the purpose of life. And number three, they are without form and void and they are covered with darkness. If you look at the Genesis chapter 1, before God created this world, the, this uh, the earth was uh, covered by the confusion and darkness, right? But by creation of God, uh, there, there, was, there was a light, there was uh, uh, the animals, and also um, the plants, and finally God created a human being. And also God said that uh, the, um, it is good, right? So our life also was the same. Before we got saved, our life was like a darkness because we don't know the destination of my life and we don't know the reason the why I am living in this world, right? We don't know the where uh, or did I come from. Yeah. But the, when we got saved, we realized everything, right? Yeah. So, mm, number three, mm, Mm. Psalm chapter 107, verse 4. They wandered in the wilderness in a desolate way. They found no city to dwell in. Yeah, okay. The alphabet C. Uh, what they are wandering, it is an evidence of that they are ignorance. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 18. Having their understanding uh, darkened, uh, darkened, the being alienated, uh, the, from the life of God because of the 
the ignorance that is in them because of the, the blindness of their heart. Yeah. Those who have no Bible are like a ship which is without compass. Yes, at the time, because the, uh, the long ago, the whoever uh, the abroad yeah, to another uh, the place, the by ship, uh, they need uh, the compass, right? At the time, there was no GPS and the, uh, uh, the system of the satellite, right? So to find uh, the location and destination, they need uh, the, the compass. Uh, so like that, about our life, do we need a Bible. Yeah, through the Bible, the, we can figure out which way to heaven, right? And through the Bible, so we can figure out the, what purpose of my life. Yeah. So when you got saved, we got saved by Bible. And also after we got saved, also we need the Bible, which means we need the words of God to, to figure out what should we do as a Christian in this world. Because the Bible is the guide line of God. Right? Yeah. So Bible is the best way. The, my experience and my own thoughts are not best way. What is the best way? The Bible. The Bible is the best way because the Bible is truth. That's why we have to uh, rely on the Bible more. Yeah, this is very important. So whoever draw near to the Bible can be used by God precious in the church. Yeah, that is true. The, there, the, those who have no Bible, the, which can be the light, are like people who have no lamp. At the darkness or the the when the we meet the blow out time at the night, the no light. At the time, the we have to use the flashlight, right? At the, or the candle, and then the we can see the way or some place. The without the light or lamp, the we cannot see, right? Like that. How how can we know that the best way we have to go as a Christian through the Bible? The Bible is like a light and lamp uh, for, the, for the, my life. So we can figure out the, which way uh, to the best way for the Lord uh, through the Bible. Okay, D. The lambs who wander are not saved. Hmm. The lambs who wander are not safe. Uh, when they wander, the lambs will be pierced by thorn and will fall down. And they will be wounded. The finally, they will be eaten by the beast and will die. Human being who turns against God has deep wound in his life, and he was hit by Satan, so that he will be brought to hell finally. Right? Yeah, that is true. And alphabet E, lambs who wander will be separated and strayed generally. Like these people who are not saved will walk on their own way and they, they live with a selfish mind. Yeah, they are selfish and uh, individualistic. Yeah. So the unbelievers want to say because they don't have a Holy Spirit, that's why uh, they are so selfish and they don't think about the, um, the benefit of the un, another people. Yeah, very selfish. So they are selfish and uh, individualistic, right? Okay. And large three. The things when the lambs will return to shepherd of spirit and overseers. Uh, which means what is characteristic of the uh, saved people, right? Okay, let's think about. Okay, let's look at the Bible. First Peter chapter 2, verse 25. Okay, please open your Bible. The first Peter chapter 2. The verse 25. The first Peter chapter, chapter 2 verse 25. For you were like a sheep going astray, the but have now returned to the shepherd and overseers, overseer of your souls. Yes. Okay. Our public A. There is a safety. Okay, Psalm chapter 12, verse 5, uh, let me read. For the oppression of the poor, the, for the, the sign of the needy, now I will arise, says the Lord. I will set him in the safety for which uh, he yearns. Yeah, there is no 
safe place in this world. Yeah, actually, in this world, there is no safe place. Especially we are under the pandemic now. So where is the best safe place? Yeah, in the Lord, in the Lord, right? So if someone uh, became the positive of the COVID-19, uh, they have to be isolated, right? Uh, at the isolation center. So the, like that, the, what, the, to protect, right? To protect the patient and also to prevent the spreading the virus, like that. The where is a safe place? Yeah, in the Lord. Then where is the Lord? In the church. That's why the church is uh, the most safe place. At the time of Noah, the, when the God judged the world by water, the where was the most safe place? In the world or in the ark? Yeah, in the ark. Ark was uh, the, the shadow of Jesus now, right? So, yeah, peace and safety, then the sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon uh, the pregnant woman. Yeah, this world will be disappeared, right? There is no real happiness, and also the, this world cannot be a safe place because this, the, our world is not the uh, eternal world. Okay, circle one. When spirit got saved, they were transferred into eternal safe place. God is our refuge place, safe place. Yeah, the hope in God is uh, also safe, right? Yeah. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. Yes, the, our Lord is our uh, saved place. So that's why whenever we are under the sufferings, what should we do? We have to rely on Him. God is our helper. The God is our the shield. And God is our uh, the safe place. That's why the, we have to listen to the Lord always. The, when we got saved, the spirit was covered by the, the wrapper of the life of the God. Right? Yeah. Isaiah chapter 32 verse 17, the work of the righteousness will be peace and the effect of the righteousness, the quietness and assurance forever. Yeah, circle two, if we keep the word of God in our life, we can stand at place where we can be safe. Yeah, what is a safe way as a Christian? Obedience. Yeah, obedience. Whenever we obey the, His word, even though situation and environment around us looks uh, difficult and impossible, looks impossible to overcome, but if we obey His word, yes, God will protect our life. Under the pandemic, so the, actually, the many, uh, many uh, worry, many are afraid of the, the virus and many worry about this situation. Yes, the physically, the, we can be afraid, but as a Christian, what should we do? Yeah, what is the best way now? Yes, we have to obey. Because of the pandemic and the difficulties, if we are far from the God, if, if our heart uh, the become the cold, that is not good. If we are far from the God, which means that we can depart from the God's help, we can depart from the God's protection, right? Yeah. So we have to be stable always. We have to be stable. But uh, according to situation and whenever we meet some difficulties, if our, uh, if our heart is uh, changeable, sometimes we can be far from the church. Uh, we don't read the Bible. We don't the pray to the Lord because we are suffered now, then how can we get the God's protection, right? The best way to be protected by God is the way of obedience as a Christian, right? Don't forget about that. So if we live for the Lord, the, our God will work for me. If I work for the Lord, He will work for me. Do you understand? Yes. If I live for the Lord, He will do for me. Yes. This is very important. So, Proverbs chapter 29, verse 25, The fear of the man brings a snare, but the whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. Yes. Who 
can be protected. Yeah, please meditate this verse. Whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. Yes. Who can be saved in our generation under the pandemic now? Yes, those who trust in the Lord always will be safe. Do you really believe? Yeah, we have to believe this. Okay, page six. If we disobey, he can give a tribulation, but if we repent, he will bring us to safe place again. Yes, okay. Circle uh, three, the fake refuse place never become a safe the place. Okay, uh, alphabet B, uh, there is a joy and thanksgiving. Yeah, there will be stability in heart, therefore there will be joy and thanksgiving, right? Yeah, because of the joy and thanksgiving, uh, we don't want to commit a sin anymore, right? Do you know the, what is the reason the, the why the men are committing sin? Because there is no real satisfaction. There is no real happiness, that's why to, there are, but there, are, there, there is a desire to get the, the, the joy and also uh, the happiness. That's why they try to commit a sin. Because they think that the, by the committing sin, by evil behavior, they can be satisfied. But there is a fake satisfaction, right? But Christian who got saved, we have a real joy, real happiness, a real sense of giving, right? That's why... Uh, instead of the committing sin, so we are willing to praise the Lord and we are willing to uh, do our best for the glory of God. So we want to do good things. Yeah. Because uh, our heart that can be stable. Stable. Because of the, the real happiness we have received when he got saved. So Psalm chapter 4 verse 7, You have put the gladness in my heart more than in the season that their grain and the wine increased. Yes, you have put gladness in my heart. Yes, when he got saved, we have received the real happiness in our heart. So, no one can give this happiness, right? The whoever got saved can understand this verse. But the, if we are not saved, we can understand this verse because we don't know yet what the real happiness is. But as a Christian, we got saved. We know that what is the real happiness. That's why our life can be changed. So the difference the, between all religions of the world and the Christianity, yeah. What is the difference? Yeah. The gladness in my heart. Even though someone is going to church always, but if they are not saved, there is no real the gladness in their heart. There is no real happy and joy. That's why they try to focus on the world to get the fake happiness from the world. Yes, the Psalm 97 verse 10, You who love the Lord hate evil. He the preserves the souls of his saints. He delivers them out of the hand of the wicked. Yes, we are separated from the wicked. Yeah. The Christians are different and Christians can be different and Christians have to be different. Okay, do you understand? Yes. Okay, uh, look at the last paragraph, the page six. The David had the gladness while he was comfortable and also he had uh, the gladness while he was afflicted because God was with him. Yeah. So, the Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17, 18, the, though the fig tree may not the blossom, the blossom the nor fruit be on the vines, uh, though the lever of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no hurt, no hurt in the stalls, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Yeah, so about the prophet of the prophet Habakkuk. So he had nothing, but he was delightful. Why? Because of the salvation he had received. Right? Okay. Alphabet C. The purpose of life will be enlightened. 
we know the purpose of life. The purpose of life is clear, right? When we got saved, we, had, we realized that the, what purpose of my life is. The first Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. Therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Yes, before we got saved, we lived for the, my own desire. But after we got saved, we are willing to live for the Lord. Yes. Okay, so please look at the another verses yourself. Okay, page 8. He knows the way I should walk. Yeah, and he will guide me according to his will. Yeah, so as a Christian who got saved, we have to do our best to know, to figure out what God's will is. The we, without knowing God's will, sometimes even though we got saved, we can make a mistake and we can fall down and sometimes we can go to the wrong way. So we have to do our best to know God's will. This is the reason why we are learning the Bible together with our brothers and sisters regularly every week. Because we have to know the, His will. Then the, we can follow Him well and also the, we can do according to His will. Yeah. Okay, so uh, the way of the wicked is like that animals wander inside the thorn a thicket and will fall down at cliff. The finally, they will be fell, the fallen down into the hell. Israel, who came out from Egypt, should pass the wilderness, and there was the course they should enter. Right? So, uh, the, we have to think about that there is a course we have to do, we have to go. Okay? The Christians should pass the valley of tears. So, it's no well after we got saved, there will be. Uh, the many the, uh, tribulations and the pain and the sufferings and that is natural right okay d the we are guided by the shepherd yeah. let's think about the meaning of the shepherd shepherd what is the law of the shepherd the shepherd have to rule over the lambs shepherd have to guide them shepherd have to protect them the shepherd have to feed them Right? So, which means without shepherd, the lambs, the flock cannot grow. The flock cannot hmm, uh, eat themselves. Yeah. So, the, we need uh, our shepherd, the Lord. Yeah. So, He will protect us, He will guide us, He will feed us through the words of God, and He will do everything for me. So, we have to know about that. That's why we have to rely on Him more. Yes. Okay. So, Psalm chapter 23, verse 1 and 1 to 6. Uh, remember it? Or Psalm of David, the Lord is my shepherd. Yeah, David realized that the shepherd is the, David, uh, shepherd is the Lord. That's why the, look at the life of David. What, to whom did he rely on? The world or the another people? Well, God, yes, always he relied on God. That's why he, the, he could receive the God's protection and the wisdom and the power, the ability, right? And he was the, guided by God, he was protected by God, and he was used by God for the glory of God, right? So his life became the good example for Christians who got saved. Why? Because he relied on him from his childhood. So we have to practice to rely on Him. Especially, the way should we rely on God? Whenever we are under suffering, whenever we are afflicted, whenever we are persecuted, whenever we are under the difficulties, at the time, that time is the time we have to rely on Him, right? So, our Psalm of David, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Yeah. Which means that he was satisfied with God, right? He makes me to lie down in green the pastures, and he leads me the, beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of the righteousness for his name's sake. Yeah, though I walk, the walk the, through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your Lord and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. 
You anointed my head with oil, the my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Yes. So David, uh, David realized that God is with him, and so he realized that he had to uh, be with the Lord always, because he realized that the Lord is his shepherd. So he realized that the Lord is his guide line. Yeah. That's why he tried to do his best to follow God's will. So if you look at the Bible always, he to ask God, Lord, what should I do? What should I do? Right? Like that. He didn't follow the, his own thought. So we have to imitate his life. Okay? Uh, Alphabet E. The, we are inside the flock. Yeah. Especially the flock is shadow of church. Right? All of us, we are lambs and then the, we are, uh, we became the one as a flock. What is this? The church. And uh, who is the shepherd? Our Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 1, the, we come to know that the head of the church is Jesus Christ and church is the body of Christ, right? The body of Christ is church and this church is like a flock. And Bible said the head of the church is Jesus Christ. Uh, he is our shepherd, right? So what should we do? Yeah, very easy to answer. We have to follow him. We have to follow him because he is our shepherd. Yes. What is the following him? Yes, obedience, right? So we have to obey his will in the church. Yeah, this is, the, uh, this is what we have to do. Okay, so... Um, alphabet F, F. The last, the we will be guided to heaven, our hometown. Yes, this is our real home. Yeah. So if Jesus returned to this world, yeah, we will be the raptured, right? And then the God will bring us to the eternal life. Yeah. So we have this the living hope. That's why, even though we are under sufferings, even though we are afflicted now, uh, that we have to do our best and we have to endure, and also we have to uh, overcome the difficulties we have the with the living home. Okay? Today, the, we are learning about the shepherd and about the lamb. Okay, thank you for listening today. Uh, see you next time. Let's pray. Our heavenly and merciful Father God who loves us, thank you for giving us a great chance to study the Bible together with the brothers. Today, the, we have learned about the shepherd and also the lambs. Uh, by your grace, uh, we got saved and we became uh, the lambs and also we became uh, one as a flock. And also we had realized that uh, you are our shepherd. So as a Christian who got saved, uh, please, uh, we are willing to be guided, uh, we are willing to be the guided by you and also we are willing to be used by uh, the Lord for gospel. The Lord we know that uh, your coming is very near. So before your coming, uh, please uh, use our the brothers uh, as an instrument for gospel, the precious in the church. And also, even though there are many difficulties and uh, sufferings, uh, we really want to continue to serve the Lord. So please be with us and guide us and please help us always. And please protect our brothers always, so that our brothers can be used by God for gospel continually until the end. Thank you, Lord, that we depend everything in your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, see you next time.